All right, let's solve inequalities. Well, remember that when we solved inequalities before, we found out that if we multiply or divide by a negative, then that will has, cause us to switch the inequality. But otherwise, the inequality stays the same. All we need to do is add or subtract across the inequality and then multiply and divide across the inequality. So here we have 10 that I can take to the other side so that I'll have my variable, negative 6v term, on one side and my constant, which is now 30, on the other side. Now notice, in this very first example, I purposely gave you a negative coefficient so that you would remember that we're going to have to switch the inequality. This is going to have to become less than or equal to. And now when I divide by negative 6, I get b on this side, and 30 divided by negative 6 will be negative 5, and b is less than or equal to negative 5. If we wanted to check it, we could pick a number that was less than negative 5. Let's say b is going to be equal to, uh, say, negative 6. So if I come in here and I say negative 6, and then times my b, which is negative 6, right here, and plus 10, that should be greater than 40. Negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36 plus 10, which is greater than 40, because 46 is greater than 40. It worked. Here I have variables on both sides of the inequality, and I also have constants on both sides of the inequality. So I'm going to have to move across my inequality several times. And it doesn't matter if I move x or I move constant first. So I'm purposely going to move the x first, trying to keep it positive. Now I see that 8x is bigger than negative 2x, so I want to move everything over to this 8x side. So I add 2x to both sides, and that will give me 10x. And I still have 1 on this side, and that's greater than 51. Now I have to move the constant. So I subtract the 1, and 10x will be greater than 50. And if I divide by 10, it's a positive 10, so I don't have to change my inequality at all. x is going to be greater than 5. Over here on this last example, we have, again, variables on both sides of the inequality and constants on both sides. So I want to move my variable first. Now I see that this is a negative 3 and this is a negative 5. Negative 5 is smaller, so I want to move it over here toward that negative 3, which is larger, because then nice things will happen. If I add 5x to both sides, then I get a positive 2x over here. Positive 5x minus 3x is positive 2x, plus 5, less than or equal to negative 5 to 7. Then I subtract the 5 from both sides, and 2x is less than or equal to negative 12, subtracting 5. And I divide by positive 2, so my inequality stays the same. On this side I have x, and negative 12 divided by positive 2 will be negative 6. What happens if we look in a table? This is the second example that we had earlier. 8x plus 1 is greater than negative 2x plus 51. Well, it's going to ask us, what is f of x equal to g of x? Where are they the same? And they are the same when x is equal to, right here at 5, they're both 41. So when x is equal to 5, I have 41 equal to 41, f of x equal to g of x. f of 3, remember we come to 3 in the x, and f of 3 is going to be 23. And g of 3 is going to be 45, so we would say f of 3 is less than g of 3. And when I look at f of 6, I see that f of 6 is 49, and g of 6 is 29, so f of 6 is bigger or greater than g of 6. So what interval satisfies? And the inequality. Well, remember that this one is my f of x, and it's asking me for f of x is greater than g of x. Well, f of x is greater than g of x down here at f of 6. It's also at f of 7, and anything larger than x equaling 5 will give us f of x greater than g of x. It can't be 5, but where they're equal will always tell us where to begin. And it can be greater than 5. My inequality won't let it be equal to 5. Let's look at a graph. 
same graph of the same equation we did now symbolically and with a table 8x plus 1, negative 2x plus 51 on both sides that's g of x is negative 2x plus 51 f of x is 8x plus 1 and we want to compare f of negative 5 and g of negative 5 remember that's an x is equal to negative 5 so down here f of negative 5 looks like it's going to be approximately negative 40 and up here for x equal negative 5 g of negative 5 looks like it's going to be approximately 60 so we could say that this would be negative 40 and positive 60 so f of negative 5 is less than g of negative 5 if I do f of 10 doing the same thing I'm going to let x be 10 now remember this point right here is on my g line so g of 10 looks to be approximately 30 and my f of 10 because this is my f line f of 10 looks to be approximately 80 we don't know that for sure but it's approximate so f of 10 is now going to be greater than g of 10 where are they the same it looks like they're the same right about here where x equal 5 so does the interval we found before seem to satisfy this inequality from the graph and in our inequality before we said that x had to be greater than 5 and you can see that over here where x is greater than 5 to the right of 5 on the x-axis if I go to my graph all the points on my f graph are above the ones on my g graph so yes it satisfies it.